Well, some groups are looking into legal measures to block former President Donald Trump from running for office, citing the 14th Amendment. One watchdog group is now suing in an attempt to keep him off the ballot in Colorado. Harvard constitutional law professor Lawrence Tribe was on America Decides last night to explain the role of the 14th Amendment in this case. The language of the 14th Amendment means exactly what it says. It says that anyone who takes an oath to protect the American Constitution and holds office and then engages in an insurrection against the Constitution or gives it aid and comfort can never again hold office in the United States. That language is unambiguous. It's clear whether it applies to Donald Trump will have to be decided by states like Colorado. And when they decide, then the U.S. Supreme Court will almost certainly have the final word and it will come quickly. So meanwhile, the former president is continuing to campaign. He's visiting South Dakota for a fundraiser dinner, fundraising dinner later on today. For more analysis now, I want to bring in CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist Joel Payne, as well as Republican strategist and CBS News political analyst Leslie Sanchez. Great to see you guys on this lovely Friday. Um, hopefully it's not too hot wherever you guys are. Um, Joel, <laughs> Joel, let us talk about these pushes against uh, Trump being on the ballot. I mean, is this hurting or helping Democrats? Look, it's certainly an open question about the political fallout of any move like this. Um, you, uh, I believe you uh, introduced, I'm uh, the uh, chief communications officer for moveon.org. There's an active petition um, on our website. There's a lot of public support for that type of accountability for Donald Trump. But there is, is it actually, do, do, does it pass the smell test in terms of legally? It certainly seems like it does. I think there's a political test that it has to pass as well. Um, and I think that uh, you're going to have a lot of groups that are going to be looking for ways to make sure that if uh, whether it's the legal system, whether it's at the ballot box or whether it's through measures like this, that uh, President Trump's held accountable. Leslie, this sort of move strikes me as the kind of thing that would actually sort of ignite conservatives, uh, particularly <laughs> kind of, you know, Trumpy Republicans. And this is the kind of thing that you can sort of tw twist the messaging and get, uh, get, uh, I guess, yeah, I can't even speak. It's Friday. What can I say? That, <laughs> that, that, that it would, ins great. would inspire <laughs> Trumpy uh, Republicans. <laughs> They don't need a lot of catalyst, you know, to, uh, to, get, to, to, to get things going uh, in terms of bracing for new and additional attacks against the former president. They are already uh, fully prepared and anticipating those types of attacks, legal efforts, uh, thwarting the justice system, you know, political uh, persecution. You know, it goes on and on in terms of, of how they feel that the former president has been treated. Uh, and, and in terms of fairness, I think. I, I would agree to Joel with that. It's an open question of how this will ultimately go. But what we do see is there are a lot of these measures, and this will not be the last one, kind of on track to reach the Supreme Court. Uh, the, and they will come from many different states. So again, it, it overlays or it, it sends a pall over the entire election process because it's just so unconventional and we're not sure how that will uh, impact, especially going into nominating conventions. So, Joel, uh, the former president is holding a fundraiser in South Dakota today. The other candidates are actually focused on the early primary states. I find it quite curious because uh, from what I know about voters in those early primary states, uh, they value their position on the calendar and they value face-to-face -face contact with candidates. So what sort of messaging is Donald Trump sending when he's, you know, having a fundraiser somewhere else? Oh, the messaging he's sending is that he is operating in his own universe and that he's running his own primary, separate and apart from his uh, heretofore Republican rivals. It's why he missed the debate a few weeks ago. It's why um, he does not deal with kind of the inanities of being on the campaign trail. And look, it's working for him so far. Emory, I know we were going to talk about some recent polling. Yeah. Um, and, and one thing I just wanted to touch on super quickly related to that is this. You know, I've seen a lot of numbers that show Joe Biden, low 40s, mid 40s. And and look, I'm I'm happy to partake in the fishing exercises and we got to fill up column space and, and time and whatnot. Any poll that shows that Joe Biden is going to be in the like low mid 40s in the election, it, it just doesn't pass the smell test. And it's probably not worth 
a lot of introspection. I think what the polling does show is that, look, there's certainly a lot that's bearing on uh, President Biden. There are a lot of challenges and headwinds he's facing as any incumbent president would. But those numbers don't really reflect where the electorate is. I'm not going to pick nits with the methodology of the polling, right. but I do think kind of bigger picture is that we're at a place in the political calendar where we're looking for storylines. Um, there was a recent piece in Semaphore by a couple of really smart um, Democratic pollsters that just talked about all of the factors that we're going to be looking ahead to, whether it's money that's going to be spent in this election, how the indictment plays out, how the issue of abortion plays out. I think there is so much ahead of us, and I know that we're itching to get to it. Uh, OK, uh, Joel, because you brought up the polling, I'm required to bring it up as well. You know, like in the debate, if you mention someone's name, you got they got to talk about it. So you're, t you're talking about some new CNN polling. Uh, it looks at potential outcomes uh, of different GOP candidates matched up against President Biden. Most of them were pretty much neck and neck. But Nikki Haley was the only one that kind of showed us the strongest lead. And uh, Vivek Ramaswamy was the only candidate to lose. Um, so, Leslie, are these types of general election match up these polls? I mean, do you do you sort of agree with Joel that at this point, I mean, do they even really make much of a difference? I think they're nice for Nikki Haley's campaign because they show that she got a bump out of the debate. Right. And that helps with raising dollars, staying competitive, keeping you competitive in those first early primaries. That's really what the rest of the slate of the GOP candidates are looking for. Um, and and Trump, is, as, as Joel has alluded to, is running his own efforts. So with respect to that, in this invisible primary, the donor primary, those elements are really important for those individual campaigns. But long term, it's it, it really is like a finger to the wind. It's hard to say that any of this is going to have a bigger impact mm -hmm. overall. Do you, uh, what we saw in the polls, I don't know, do either of you... It, it, what I thought it was quite curious that it, we're not too far off from the first debate, and I feel like whatever happened there has already been put to bed. I know that yeah. you know people talked about Nikki Haley performing well and Vivek Ramaswamy sort of jumping out as well. I don't know if Vivek got much momentum from that or, at all. Um, so just uh, I'll get your your quick take. Um, did that debate have any impact at all? And I, I'll just jump in really quickly. I'd yeah. be curious to hear Leslie's thought on this, too. I think her point about Nikki Haley is a good one yeah. that is probably good for her. And if I was like a, let's say, a mainstream uh, anti-Trump Republican, I'd be looking for where is my escape hatch to get out of this 10 candidate field? Uh -huh. And how do I start to pool my resources to a candidate that looks like they can win? Joel, what I'm this gonna... poll, what the post debate tells you is that Nikki Haley appears to be maybe that person. So that's a lesson I take from the three or so weeks since that debate um, that, that doesn't show that she will win, but it shows yes. she could. Leslie, you got like 20 seconds. I'm running out of time, but I want you to respond. No, no, real quickly. Republic, there are a, a big bank of Republicans looking for alternatives, whether it's no labels, somebody else on the debate stage who can show their prowess and look like a national candidate against Joe Biden. Two thirds of the country feels this, this country is going in the wrong direction. Right. That's the statistic I look at the important to. So there's opportunity. All right, Joel and Leslie, thank you very much.